Hey everyone, thank you for watching another episode here on Sound Solution. My name is Dan, and today we're going to be going over miking up the drum set. Now, depending on the style of drums that you're recording, maybe the size of the drums, it could vary just a little bit, but ultimately it isn't very, uh, very different and really isn't that difficult. Now, what I usually record is rock music, so I'm going to show you how I set up my microphones for that kind of sound. Uh, but let's just go ahead and dive right on in. The one thing that's really good to point out before you actually start setting up your microphones is making sure that whoever's playing the drums isn't going to hit those microphones. So I find that it's best to have the drums uh, completely set up with cymbals and everything in position and then begin to mic up the drums from that point. That way you could avoid any possible damage from a drumstick or a sloppy performance that might collide into your microphone. For the kick drum, there are various amounts of sounds that you can get from your microphone placement. Uh, based off where you put it, you can get more body, more attack, and it really just depends on the style or the sound that you're wanting to achieve. Now for me, with the more of a rock sound, I like to get more of that attack, the sound of the beater. So what I'll do is I'll point my microphone inside the porthole and close to the beaters to get more of that initial attack, as well as the body. Now if you're wanting more body, less attack, you can pull the microphone away, uh, have it more towards the edge of the port or even outside the port to get more of the body sound. And sometimes when positioning the microphone inside, you can point it in different places to get different types of sounds. Uh, you can just experiment with this to see what works best for you, um, and, you know, what kind of sound that you're trying to achieve. You know? But as far as the sound that I typically uh, try to go for, I like to get a little bit more of that high end so I, I point it closer to the beaters. When miking up drums with your close microphones, I like to make sure that the microphone's pointing directly at the center of the drum. Uh, one way you can make sure that you're pointing at the center is to go around to the opposite side of the drum where the microphone's pointing and make sure that it's lining up with the center. Now with some microphones, depending on their position and, and the drum, I like to go maybe three, four finger lengths above the drum. And this can change depending on the sound that you actually want. And this is really the method that I do. For overhead microphones, there's many different methods that you can choose. You know, we have the space pair, XY, mid-side, you can even do mono with one microphone, plus many others. I would encourage you to just kind of see what's out there, do some research, and find out what, uh, what may work best for you and maybe your style of drumming or recording. Uh, but I like to use the mid-side. Now with the mid-side, what that actually does is it uses two microphones. Well, one of those microphones is capturing the stereo image, the left and right of the uh, drum set while the other one's capturing a mono image that can be used in situations where your drums are converted to mono. So uh, there's different methods, again, that you can just check and, and see which works best for you. Now, each style can give you a different sound. For example, Space Pair might give you a wider stereo width sound, depending how far apart your microphones are. Uh, and again, with mono, how close it is, uh, and all these methods can give you different results. You just have to kind of see, again, what works best for you. But what your overheads do is it really gives you a lot more of the sound of your drums and the sound of the room. Now with all your close mics, you do have all the image, uh, the close soundness of that drum, but a lot of your sound is coming from the overheads. So based off what works for you, just do some research and then go with that one. Now one thing that you're always going to be challenged with when recording drums is phase issues. And what phase is, is where the sound is reaching microphones at different times, causing your wavelengths to not line up. And you can see this in your DAW, if you zoom in really close to the wavelengths, you can see if they're lining up. Now if they don't line up, the result is they're going to be crashing into each other, and the result from that could be thinner, less powerful sound. So what you can do is measure out distance from your microphones from your drums. And what you can do is, you know, with your drums and you have a stereo image, usually what's in the center of that stereo image is your snare drum and your kick drum. 
So what you can do is pick one of the drums and go from there. If you have like two overhead microphones they're using that are spaced out, for example, space pair, what you can do is pick the drum you want to measure from and line it up to that microphone and then and measure the same distance to the other microphone. And this will help eliminate those phase issues that you could encounter. Now another place that you could encounter some phase issues is on your snare drum. Now I like to use two microphones on my snare drum, one on the top, one on the bottom, and as a result there could be some phase issues here. Now again, you can always zoom in on your DAW and see how the wavelengths are lining up. And a lot of times, if not most of the times, you're gonna actually see an opposite of your wavelengths. Uh, maybe the top snare is going one way and the bottom snare is going another. Now what you can do here to test what sounds better is flip the polarity. Uh, a lot of plugins offer you know, this option where you can just flip polarity through there. Or if you have on your preamp, you have a pre, uh, on your preamp you could have a polarity switch that you could select there and it'll do it for you before the recording. Now it's not a hard fast rule that you always need to do this, but just check it out one way or the other, listen a few times and see what actually sounds better for your mix. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been beneficial, giving you some tips and some insight on how to mic up your drums for your sound. Now, if you like this video, please leave it a like. If you want more content just like this, please subscribe to my channel. And please feel free to leave any comments below with tips or suggestions that you might have when it comes to miking up drums. And again, thank you for watching on Sound Solution, and we'll see you next time.